Revelation chapter 13, we read this about the people on earth who refuse to worship God and instead worship the beast. And it contrasts them with the people who worship Jesus. And it says in Revelation 13 verse 8, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, meaning the beast, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What does it mean to say that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world? I've only got about two minutes to explain this, and to be honest, I could easily preach a sermon lasting for a good hour on that one phrase. Without concentrating on the idea of Jesus being the lamb, let's concentrate at the moment instead on Jesus being slain from the foundation of the earth. And the phrase in Greek, the foundation of the earth, is used. That sort of phrase is used many times in the New Testament. And it always refers to the beginning of creation. For example, in Matthew 19, when Jesus says that Adam and Eve were from the beginning. Or even at the beginning of John's Gospel, where I read, in the beginning was the word. So here we have the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. How is it then that at the beginning of creation, Jesus could be slain? And yet, of course, we know when Jesus was slain. The answer is that everything was created by Jesus. And though I can't presume to understand the mind of God and why he put such a plan in place that required the death of God the Son, Jesus Christ, we can say this, that when God was walking in the garden after the first sin and he presents, he pronounces the curse on the serpent and on Adam and on Eve. The person of the Trinity who was talking, the one who is the word of God, is Jesus. And God says to the serpent that one day there would come the man who was the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman. In other words, someone who has no earthly father, but does have an earthly mother. One day there would come the man who is the seed of the woman, who would crush the serpent's head while the serpent bruised his heel. We know that that person was Jesus, and it's Jesus himself who is declaring that to the serpent and in the hearing of Adam and Eve, that people might believe and that the only way there was going to be the forgiveness of sins, the, f the complete covering of sins, was by the death of Jesus, who was to be the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We remember, don't we, that Adam and Eve had tried to clothe themselves, tried to cover their own guilt with fig leaves, and it wasn't good enough. And the next thing that happened after God had pronounced the curse is that God gave Adam and Eve clothes of skin, the second person of the Trinity there in the garden must have killed an animal to provide skins to clothe Adam and Eve and cover their guilt. And what a picture of the work that he himself was to wrought as he stepped into history and became the lamb slain for us. But it was in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. That's who Jesus is. That's what we remember as we come to the end of the, what the church calendar likes to call the Holy Week, as we remember the death of Jesus on the cross, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world.